Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial on demystifying page numbers, orientation and headers in Microsoft Word. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be investigating. And what we're going to be investigating is the use of section breaks because section breaks are the key to making changes in the middle of a Word document. So for example, if you want to change your page numbering, if you want to change headers and footers so you have a different header or footer throughout a different section or a different area of your document, if you want to change page orientation so you have some portrait pages and then followed by some landscape pages, or if you want to use columns for only part of a document, in any one or all of these cases, the only way that you can successfully make these kind of changes in a document is to use section breaks. Now section breaks can be a little bit scary when you first use them, but I'm going to demystify them. I'm going to show you how to add section breaks, how to change page numbers, headers, page orientation and columns. And I'm also going to show you a couple of gotchas with section breaks so that if you need to remove them, I'm going to show you how you can safely remove them without having the entire document go haywire in the process. So if you're ready, let's get started and I'm going to open a Word document. I've opened a document here in Microsoft Word and it is seven pages long. Now it's all one section, so the entire document is one section and that's typically the way that you'll work in Word. If we're going to add a header or footer to the document, we just go insert and then header and footer. We could choose either one of the custom headers or footers or we could just click edit header and we can go and create our own header text. So I might call this Photoshop layers. And I may want to put a page number in here. So I'll tap the tab key twice to get over to this right align tab over here. And then to add the page number, I'm just going to open up the page number options here. And what I want to do is to insert a page number at the current position. So I'll just click on this. It's just a plain number and it's gone in at the current position. And then I'll close the header and footer. Now this is typically how you would add a header or footer to a just a standard document. But let's consider that we want to make some changes to this document and for example, we want to insert in here a table. So we want a table on a landscape orientation page in between this page and this one. Well, to do that we need to add a section break because a section break is the only way that you can change page orientation in the middle of a document. It's easy enough to change the whole document to landscape orientation, but that's not what we want. To add our section break, I'm going to click the page layout tab and then click breaks. And you can see here that we've got four different types of section breaks. Next page is one that will create a section starting on the next page. Continuous will add a section break within a page and so the rest of the text will go on that same page. That's not going to work for us, we need a new page. So we're going to select next page. But we could, if we wanted to and if we were working on a document where we were concerned about what was on the left and the right hand side of the page, then we could insert a page break so that the section would then start on the next even numbered page or the next odd numbered page. You would only use these if you were doing a sort of book layout. But for us, next page is exactly what we want, so I'm going to click that to add a new section break. And ostensibly nothing's happened. We saw the paragraph down here jump a little bit, but we're not seeing anything on the screen. I'm going to the Home tab because this paragraph icon here, the Show Hide button, lets us see things like section breaks in our document. And when I click on it, you can see that there's a section break here. It's a next page section break, exactly what we inserted. We went to Breaks and we said we wanted a next page section break and that's exactly what we've got. Now we can't put anything on this page after this section break because everything has to go on the next page. So here we are on the next page. I'm going to press the Enter key a couple of times just to move everything out of the way. And what I need now is another one of those section breaks because I need to mark off a page that I can then change the orientation of. So again, I'm going to choose Break and I'm going to choose Next Page. So I need a section break above and at the end of the page that I'm going to change the orientation of. 
Now I need to place my cursor inside the new page. It's between the two next page section breaks. And I'll choose Orientation, Landscape. And that changes this page into Landscape Orientation but it's left intact as we hoped it would the remainder of the document. So the remainder of the document is in portrait orientation. It may be easier to see if I click on view and we see multiple pages. I'm just going to shrink my page size down a little bit. So we've got three portrait pages, followed by one landscape page and then some additional portrait pages. And in here, we could insert our table. Now I'm just going to insert a quick table just so we've got something in there so that we can see how it's going to look. And you can see this table has now spread to be the full width of a landscape page. Now as I'm looking at the screen here, I can't see the section numbers. If you want to be able to see section numbers, right click the status bar and select section. And now when you're in a section of the document, the status bar will tell you the section you're in. So here I'm in section one. This here is the section two of the document. And over here is section three. And you can read that off the status bar. Now. Since we've got sections in our document, let's have a look and see how having sections affects our headers and footers. I'm just going to double click in the header area to get into the header of this document. I'm just going to enlarge the screen size of this document a little bit. You can see here that we've got a header of section one, and this here is the footer of section one. And this is the same header, it's section one and footer of section one. As I scroll through the document, here's a header for section one and a footer for section one. So the header on the first three pages and the footer on the first three pages is going to be identical. But here we have a header for section two. But it looks exactly the same as the header for section one. And that's because Word defaults to giving you the exact same header throughout the document. Only if you want to change it, can you do so. Because you can see here, it's set to same as previous. But if I click on same as previous here, I'm taken to this icon here in the header and footer tools. And I can break this link. So if I click to break the link, then the two headers and footers are no longer stuck together, if you like. And so I can make changes to this one. So for example, I could remove the title from this page and just retain the page number. So I'm going to get in front of the page number here and just hit the tab key to move it across. I'm going to move the right tab further along so that the page number is right on the right hand side of the page as we would expect it to look. But we haven't changed the header in section one because we've broken the link between the two of them. At the moment, the footer is the same as previous, so you can unlock these headers and footers independently. You may want a footer that runs throughout the entire document, but you may want different headers, or vice versa. Now down here, we've got a header the same as previous, but it's the same header as we had here in section two. Well, we may want to break that link as well. So let's take off the link to previous. And now I've got a different header for the end of my document. And what I would probably want is just to copy the header from section one. So I'll go into section one, copy the header. And now I'm going to replace the header in section three with this header from section one. So my document has two headers in it. It has one header that is in section one and section three. In other words, every single portrait orientation page has the exact same header. But there is a different header on this section too, which is my landscape orientation page. It just looks neater for a page that is in that orientation. If I'm done, I can just click close header. So section breaks not only let you change the orientation of the page, but you can also change the look of the header. The other thing that you can change with a change of section is that you can change the page numbering. Let's go back into the header here and let's go to the page numbers. 
and I'm going to click on Format Page Number because I'm in Section 2 here and you can see that at the moment it's set to continue from the previous section. But what if I don't want that to be the case? What if I want to restart my page numbering at this point? Well, I'll select Start At and set it to Page 1 to then stop the numbering at the end of Section 1 and restart it at the beginning of Section 2 with a new page number. I'll click OK. Let's have a look. The pages are numbered 1, 2 and then 3 and then they're restarting to be page number 1 and then 2 and 3. So Word is helping us by saying, well, you changed it to start again at page number 1 but probably what you'll want is some continuous numbering from here. And if we say yes, then that's exactly what we've got. If we don't want it to be continuously numbered, if we want to start again, for example, we're just going to right click in here, choose Format Page Number and again we can start at. And we may choose, for example, to start at page 4 and I'll click OK. And there's it starting at page 4. So we've got a lot of flexibility with page numbering headers and footers as well as page orientation by using section breaks. I'm going to click close header and footer to go back to the document. We'll have a look at columns in just a few minutes but before I leave this particular document I want to show you something. Normally you would at this point disable the show hide button so you could just see the document very clean and neat as it would be if it were to print. But say you've done all this work and somebody comes along and says, well, yes, that's fine, but you know, I didn't really want this table in the middle of the document. I wanted you to set up a brand new document for it or whatever. So can you take it out? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, you can take it out. But exactly how you do that needs to be looked at. Let's go back to the Home tab of the ribbon and let's turn our markers on so we can see everything. Now there are two section breaks here. There's a section break here and one here. And since we inserted those two section breaks to create the empty page in the first place, we may be tempted to simply go and delete these section breaks to get rid of the page that we added. So I've positioned myself in front of this section break and I'm just going to press the delete key to delete it. And we've just had a really nasty surprise here. The really nasty surprise is that all of a sudden pages 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are all landscape pages now and the remaining pages of the document are portrait orientation. So while we thought taking out this section break here might turn the document back into a portrait orientation document, it hasn't done so. Let's just click the Undo Clear button so that we can put the section break back in and let's talk about what is in this section break. Well, what is in this section break is a description of what appears in front of it. So in this section break are details about this section in the document, the first section in the document. And by deleting that section break, we're telling Word, well, we're not interested in what you thought section 1 was formatted as because this is going to be the new section break and it's going to control everything ahead of it. And because this page is a landscape orientation page, then that's what we want the rest of the document to be. If we wanted to make this page portrait orientation, we would need to remove this section break. It's the one that follows or is at the end of the section because it contains all the details about the section ahead of it, the one in front of it. This is the section of the document that is landscape orientation so we want Word to forget about it if we want to get rid of this page. So I'm just going to select this one and press delete. And now something completely different happens. What happens is that that landscape orientation page has been removed. The entire document is now portrait orientation and if we didn't want this table then we could just take it out. But we've safely returned the document to being a portrait orientation document by selecting and removing the correct section break. Now because these sections, Section 2 and Section 1, are essentially the same layout, they're both portrait orientation and they both have the exact same header, we could at this stage go back and remove this section break. 
but there aren't any nasty surprises this time. The entire document looks as we expect it to look. So just be aware that when you're removing a section break, I suggest that for safety you save your document before you do it. Then remember that it's the one at the end of the section that you want to remove, not the one at the front. But if you've saved your document, then if you delete the wrong one, at least you'll be able to go back to the original document. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is looking at columns in a document. So I'm just going to turn off the markers for right now and I'm going to say with this document what I want is this header to be as it is but from here on down I want the whole of the rest of the document to be in columns. So I'm just going to select all the content of the document. I'm going to page layout and I'm going to columns and I'm going to more columns. I want two columns in this document and I'm happy with this layout and I'm going to apply it to selected text and click OK. Let's go back to page one of the document because the document has now been broken into columns as we expected it to. But let's have a look when we turn on those paragraph markers and all these hidden characters. Can you see there's a section break here? It's a section break continuous. So this section break is controlling the top part of the document here and there is an invisible section break here at the end of the document that controls section 2 which is the column arrangement for this document. Now I'm about to select and delete this section break so think about what might happen when I do so. Well, we know that section breaks contain the formatting for the portion of the document in front of the section break. And so what we would expect to happen when this is deleted is that the whole document will now be in column format. Let's do that. I'll press the delete key. And as we expected to happen, this first section has been removed and it's been sort of merged in with section 2 and the entire document is column formatted. So if you ever have columns in your document and you try to get rid of them by selecting and removing the section break, you'll see as it has happened here that you're bound to be disappointed. The correct way to perhaps undo the columns would be to position yourself somewhere in the column area and go to Page Layout Columns and just select one. And that will set you back to single columns. And when you've done that, it's then safe if you want to, to remove the section break. So there are some ways that you can control having different headers and footers, different page orientation, and also columns and page numbers within a document. And the secret to that is using sections. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find my office blog which contains tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of office applications including Word, Excel and PowerPoint.